Hey guys, welcome to Simply Electrical. This is part of my crash course series where I'm going to go through a multifamily dwelling service calculation using the optional method. The crash course series is where I go through very quickly and just give you multiple examples of different situations, different loads on these multifamily dwellings, trying to give you an idea of what you might run into on a test or in the field somewhere. This is on the 2020 code, but this is also going to be good for several code cycles going backward because they don't change Article 220 very much. But just to be sure, check with your code cycle, make sure there aren't any changes that you need to be aware of. Okay, so I've developed this table here to give you all your information in one shot. So you have the whole calculation on one page and you don't have to go flipping back and forth between pages uh, to see how everything's done. So we got every step here. I'm going to take a minute and just go over this really quickly to show you how it's broken down and how it works. And then we'll get into some examples and we'll fill in our information for each example and show you how this formula gives you the right answer. Okay, we're going to start in the left hand column. We're going to take the square footage of each unit times three and get a VA value here. We're going to take the small appliance loads. We're going to take our laundry loads if they apply. And we'll talk about that later. We're going to take our fixed appliances and the nameplate rating of those, list those and get their values over here. We're going to take our range or cooking at its nameplate, our dryer at its nameplate, water heater at nameplate, and then any extra motor we might have at their nameplate. Then we'll take the largest of the heating or cooling at its nameplate. Once we have all those, we're going to tally all these up and get our total per unit VA. We're going to slide that number right up here and multiply by our number of units. That'll give us a, our total building VA. Then we're going to go to table 220.84 and get a demand factor, apply that to our total VA and get our total demand load. Then if we have any house loads, which we won't in our examples because I treat those separately. In fact, I have another video on that, how to compute house loads. They are actually done with the standard method and not the optional. But once you have that total, you would put that here and we would add it to our demand load. But for our examples, we're just going to take our demand load and that is going to be our total VA. Then we'll divide by our voltage to get our amps and that'll give us our service size. And then we can size our feeders and our conduit and our meter packs and whatever by that. And don't worry if this is going too fast for you guys. That's what this video is about. It's just a, it's called the crash course for a reason. It's to go quickly through examples. If you need more explanation on how to do these formulas and these tables, please see my deep dive series where I take the time to go through very meticulously through each step and give you every code reference and all the information you need to do these calculations and to figure this out. Okay, let's get to our examples. Okay, our first example is going to be a triplex. And each unit is 1600 square foot, has a 1200 watt dishwasher, 4,500 watt water heater, a 1,000 watt disposal, an 1,800 watt microwave, a 7,800 watt range, a 1,300 watt clothes dryer, a 4,700 watt dryer, a 9.5 kW furnace, and a 3,600 watt heat pump. There are no house loads on this service, like I mentioned, and it is a 122 40 volt single phase service. So what is the total calculated service load in amps? All right, so we got our example one, all the data points listed over here. We're going to start in this left-hand column. So we're going to take our square footage of a unit, which is 1,600 square feet per unit. We're going to multiply by three. That gives us 4,800 VA. Then we go over our small appliances. Now remember, we don't have any small appliance circuits called out here in the example, but we have to put those in. Those are required by code. Two minimum at 1,500 VA a piece. So we're going to put 3000 VA here. Same thing goes for our laundry. If we have laundry in the building, in the units, then we have to add a circuit for each unit. So that's why I put if applicable here, because some multifamilies don't have laundry facilities in the units. And then we wouldn't have to put it there. But in our case, we have a clothes washer right there. Even though it says 1300 Watts, we have to put 1500 minimum for this calculation. All right, once we have that, we go on to our fixed appliances. We have dishwasher, microwave, and disposal. We've got their values there. We have a range. We take the nameplate of our range. 
7800 right there. We take our dryer, again the nameplate, we've got a 4700 watt dryer. We take a water heater, we have a 4500 watt water heater, nameplate. We don't have any extra motors, so we don't worry about that. Then we take the largest of our heat or cooling, and we have a 9.5 kW furnace, and we have a 3600 watt heat pump. So obviously we take the furnace, put 9500 there. Once we have that, we can total up the column. We come up with 39,800 VA per unit. Slide that number right up here. And then we're going to multiply by our number of units. Since it's a triplex, we got 3 as our multiplier. 39,800 times 3 is 119,400 VA. And that is the total VA for the units. So now we can apply our demand factor. We go to table 220.84. We find out that three units will allow us a demand factor of 45%. So 45% of 119,400 is 53,730 VA, and that's our total demand load. Then, of course, we would add our house loads if we had any, but we don't have any house loads, so that's a zero. So 53,730 slides on down, and that is our total VA. Divide by our voltage, which is 240 volts, single phase. So just divide by 240, that gives us 224 amps, and that is our service size. Okay, example number two, we have an eight unit condo. Each unit is 725 square feet, has 1100 watt dishwasher, 4100 watt water heater, 1000 watt disposal, 1400 watt micro hood, 6200 watt range, a 5,000 watt dryer, 6,500 watt furnace, and two 1,200 watt window AC units. Again, no house loads, 122 40 volt service, single phase. What is the total calculated service load in amps? Okay, we've got our example two data over here. I'm gonna start with the square footage. It is 725 square feet per unit. We're gonna multiply by three, get 2175 VA. We're going to add our small appliance circuits, 3,000 there. We're going to add our laundry circuit, 1,500 there. Then our fixed appliances, we have a dishwasher, disposal, and micro hood. We've got a range, 6,200 watts. We've got a dryer, 5,000 watts. We've got a water heater at 4,100. And the largest of our heat and cooling is the heat at 6,500 watts. Adding all these together, we get 31,975 VA Per unit. Slide that number up here, multiply by 8 because it's 8 unit condo. That gives us 255,800 VA for our total VA. Table 220.84 demand factor tells us that 8 units gives us an option of 43% for our demand factor. 43% of 255,800 is 109,994 VA for our total demand load. Again, we have no house loads. So 1,000, so 109,994 is our total VA. Divided by 240, which is our service, single phase, gives us 458 amp for our service size. Example number three, we have a 20 unit multiplex. And I won't bother reading the rest of this since we have the information on the next page. Here it is over here. Example three, we have 923 square feet. We're going to multiply by three, it gives us 2769 VA. We're going to add two small appliance circuits for 3000. We're going to add one laundry circuit for 1500 because it does tell us, again, we have a clothes washer. Fixed appliances, we have a dishwasher, disposal, micro hood, and now we have a jetted tub also. We have a 9,000 watt range, 5,000 watt dryer, 4,500 watt water heater, no extra motors, and we have a 10,000 watt furnace and a 6,000 watt heat pump, so we're gonna take the 10,000 watts for the furnace. We're gonna add this column together and come up with 41,369 VA for our total per unit. Bring that number up here. We're gonna multiply by our number of units which is 20, 41,369 times 20 is 827,380 VA. 
go to our demand factors in table 220.84. That tells us that 20 units gives us the demand factor of 38%. Multiply that by 827.380 and we get 314,404 VA for our total demand load. No house loads, so 314,404 is our total VA. Divide by 240 single phase and then gives us 1,310 amps for our service size. All right, our last example, number four, we have a 60 unit high rise studio apartment building. Now this one's a little bit different because all of our cooking and heating appliances are gas and there are no laundry provisions on site, no house loads. It's a 12208 phase service but then all the distribution feeders after the service are single phase. So in other words, every panel in each unit is single phase panel. All the feeders coming off of the service are single phase. So what is the total calculated service load in amps? Okay, this one's a little tricky because we are not allowed to use this example with the optional method. If you remember back in 220.84a, it tells us that there are certain stipulations that prevent us from using the optional method. Now let's read A here. Feeder or surface load. It shall be permissible to calculate the load of a feeder or service that supplies three or more dwelling units of a multifamily dwelling in accordance with Table 220.84 instead of Part 3 of this article if all of the following conditions are met. Number one, no dwelling unit supplied by more than one feeder. Okay, we meet that. Two, each dwelling unit is equipped with electric cooking equipment. Okay, now we don't meet that because we do not have any cooking equipment that's electric. All cooking and heating appliances are gas. So this makes us fail to be able to use the optional method here. However, there is an exception. The exception says when the calculated load for multifamily dwellings without electric cooking in part three, of this article exceeds that calculated under part four for the identical loads plus electric cooking based on 8,000 per unit, the lesser of the two loads shall be permitted to be used. Now I explained this on my deep dive series for the optional method multifamily. So please go there if you want some more explanation on this. I'm gonna go over this fairly quickly here. What it's telling us is that we can take and calculate this same example under part three, which is the standard method for multifamily and come up with our answer. And then we can take this example again and calculate it through this optional method, but we have to add an 8,000 watt cooking appliance to each unit. Once we do that, we compare the two numbers and we can use the lesser of the two loads. So that's what we're gonna do. This is the same example, this is 4A, only we added an 8,000 watt range to each unit. That way we meet the criteria for using the optional method. So let's figure this up and then see what we come up with as a total. Okay, so you see right here in blue, we have the 8,000 watt range added. We're gonna start with our square footage, 333 square foot per unit times three is 999 VA. We're going to add our small appliances, 3,000. We are not going to add a laundry because there are no laundry provisions this time. So it's zero for laundry. We have a disposal and a micro hood for appliances. We have our cooking that we just added, 8,000. We have no dryer. We have no water heater, no extra motors. And we don't even have any heat. So the only thing we do have is an AC unit. So we have to put the AC unit here, 1,200 watt AC unit. Now we add all this together, we get 15,999 VA per unit. Slide that number up here. We multiply by our number of units, which is 60, and we get 959,940 VA. Go to table 220.84, and we see that 60 units gives us a demand factor of 24%. Multiply that times 959,940, and we get 230,386 VA for our total demand load. We have no house loads, so nothing to add there. 
So 233.86 VA is our total VA for the building. Now we need to divide this by our voltage, but this is three phase now, remember, and it's 208 volts. So we take 230,386 and we divide by the square root of three times 208 volts and we get 640 amps for our service total. So that completes our first step in getting a total with the optional method, including our fictitious 8,000 watt range per unit. Okay, now that we have the total for our optional method, let's take a look at the standard method total and see which one we are able to take. On another video, I have done this very same example using the standard method, and here I have inset that table on this page so you can see the difference. The standard method gave us a total of 299,279 VA, which comes out to 831 amps. Now you can see how different that number is. The total VA for our optional method, even though we included an imaginary range in each unit, it still only came to 230,386 VA and 640 amps. So you can see that's nearly a 200 amp difference between the standard method and the optional. So that gives you a good indicator of how vast the discrepancies can be here. And so it's a huge advantage to be able to use this optional method when sizing a service. If you're interested, you can see this example on my video for multifamily standard method crash course. Hey, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please throw me a like and also please subscribe to my channel. You can catch a lot of other videos that I've made for these same type of calculations. I've got some other crash course series that have multiple examples of different ways of doing these calculations. I also have deep dive series which gives you every step and every detail, every code reference that you need to find out exactly what's going on and where the information is coming from. Please feel free to check that out. And if you have any other ideas of what you want in a video, please let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do about making such a video happen. All right, well, thanks again. And don't forget guys, stay free.